Apparently this is was number 17. I saw that was a good Photoshop my friend Randall did with shit house 17 on the back of the toilet. <laughs> Hello, I'm Adam from NUFC Fans, and no, it wasn't a dream. Transfer deadline day actually happened. With all the twists and turns of your favourite television programme, Musa Sissoko finally left Newcastle United. For Champions League football, no less, Ross. Maybe. Maybe. I'm joined as ever by my good friend Ross, and we are here to pick through the bones of transfer deadline day and look forward to where it leaves Newcastle for the rest of the season. So, Ross. Adam. The big question. Sissoko went to Tottenham. Is that what you thought you'd end up? On deadline day, yeah, when you heard it was Ever- a choice of Everton and Tottenham and only one of those clubs plays in the Champions League. There's the only bi- one option for the guy, wasn't it? The bigger question, though, can you, Adam and Eve, we got £30 million for Musa Sissoko? No. Then why have we? Panic stations from Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> it was simply a panic buy. Apparently they were linked with Isco in the final week of the window they mm. didn't get him and I think Musa was the next choice of a player that they apparently needed but when you look at the options they have you're struggling to see when he's going to play a game I mean we talked about this on the last episode of Musa Watch but how the hell does Sissoko get into that Tottenham side they've got I mean if you want to play deep there's Wanyama and Dembele Ali's even played quite far back if you want to play wide they've got Sun and Lamella uh, if he wants to play in the number 10, they've got Ericsson. Even Harry Kane's played in the number 10 role. I mean, is that a £30 million squad player they've That got? is a £30 million bench warmer they've bought there. And he's going to be over the moon come January when he's played four games in uh, the League Cup and whatnot. Well, actually, Ross, I would, I would like to point out at this stage, we haven't fielded him yet. So he's not played for anybody this season. Which means that if he does really well at Spurs, he can still get that move to Real Madrid in January. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thought it was going to happen this summer, didn't we? But it didn't. No, I didn't. It's a lull. I didn't think it was going to happen well, this summer. Neither did I really, but you know. I didn't think he was going to go to Tottenham, of all people, places, though, after making so many kissy faces at Arsenal for well, over quote, a year now. That quote's a little bit funny, isn't it? The, the, be- <laughs> the beautiful Arsenal. My beautiful Arsenal. My heart is at Arsenal. Bless him. That is that is that the equivalent? I don't really understand the North London derby. It's the equivalent of saying, I, I really like Sunderland, me. And My heart lies in Sunderland and then signing for us a month later. You just can't imagine it, can you? No. Nope. You'd think that would rule you out. Yeah. Move. Also, what I, I thought I'd reminisce about the good times of Musa, watch a little one of those YouTube packages with him. And the last day of last season, he dived against Tottenham Hotspur to win a penalty. No. Do you not remember? He You're almost right, tripped huh? himself up to win a penalty and somehow Mr. Pochettino thinks I'll have a bit of that in my team or on my bench. Do you think this could be a case of... Did He, he played all right in that Spurs game, didn't well, he? Well, because the, the shot window was wide yeah. open, wasn't it? He wide played open. quite well. We haven't had a player play for a move while still playing for us since Oli Bernard in a friendly against Rangers. You know, we scored that 40-yard howitzer at the top oh, corner. Yes. Then we released him and six months later he turned up at Rangers. And six months after that he came back with, came a, back with it, a, yeah. a gammy knee. God, that, was, that was a good bit of transfer deadline day business, wasn't it, Oli Bernard? Almost as good as that one, Sibierski. That was quite the window. Almost as Rossi, good. Rossi, Sibierski. Oba Femi Martins. Glenn Rhoda, we hardly knew ye. Um, just so it was gone, we also lost Vukic and Sami Amiobi. Do you think that was the right move for both of them? I think they're both very lucky to get moves, because they've both just dropped off the face of the earth recently, haven't they? Sami still not. I mean, obviously, they were on loan. Where was Sami last year? Cardiff. Cardiff, and then you had Vukic and both all over Wigan the, he was in all over the place wasn't Wigan he? so they must have done alright down there to earn themselves moves but they both offered a lot of potential when they got into the first team uh, Vukic especially I mean can we just say it was Pardew's bad management that they never kicked on or they just never that good well, Vukic couldn't string more than a game together for Newcastle before he got a, a severe injury that ruled him out for roughly seven years mm. and then obviously Sammy just hasn't got that thing that Shola had, which meant that he stuck, he stuck, <laughs> what thing was that, he Ross? stuck around for about 13 years longer than he was worth. <laughs> Thankfully, we've learned from where... Wait, I know he's a bit of a cult figure, isn't he? but Shola was crap at the end of the day. He was a crap oh, footballer. No, he I'm was. sorry. I'm sorry. He was rubbish. No. He was terrible. No, He had, no. A, fantas- he had, his, he had, he had a fantastic chest. And a fantastic penalty record. And a fantastic penalty record. But other than that, he offered absolutely diddly squat. So I'm, thankfully I'm we've learned from mistakes there. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Ross. I just I just can't allow that to slide. I just don't like the whole loving with Shola, mate. He was he was awful. He was a lovely footballer at times. 
How many times? Like every derby he played in, and you see that that's it. he scored against the Magnums. You need to do more than that for me. Move this, on. This Move just, on. This just in: Shola Amio will be no longer a cult figure because Ross Tweddle needs to see more from him. Correct. Uh, how do you rate our overall business? If actually, before we get onto that, Christian Atu signed. Obviously, I think they were waiting until the Sissoko news came through so that they could, you know, kind of control the agenda. It's a good old PR technique. Do you know anything about Christian Atsu? I've not seen him kick a ball ever. He's a typical winger. He's small. He's quick. He's tricky. So, <laughs> that what a t- is that a typical winger? That's a typical winger. Small, quick, and tricky. And we think he's going to play on the left. He's got to because you cannot be dropping Matthew James Cuthbert Ritchie from the right. <laughs> Can you be dropping Johan Pierre John Luc Picard Gouffran? Yes. <laughs> but he's been excellent. He hasn't been excellent, though, has he? He's just he's been better than what he has been. He's been the difference maker, I think. Would you look at how, how against Brighton was he the difference maker? Was he? Yes. No. Maybe. No. I just think overall he, he makes the squad more cohesive for having him. There. Obviously, he's got his role away from home, especially because he works his bloody socks off going the other way. But still, I know he nearly scored from forty yards against Brighton, which would have caused me to leave that stadium immediately after a nutmeg. Aye, you did. Aye. Ross did claim this on the live stream, by the way. Had Gufran's nutmeg and then forty-yard strike gone straight into the top corner, he would have been out of his seat, not in celebration, but towards the exit. Would Fo- you like? Would you like to unpack that for the audience? Football would have been broken. <laughs> it would have been broken. Officially broken. You and Gufran doing that? Come on, come off it! And you still, and you still can't catch a break in your mind. We well, you still no, would have him out I the think team. As we stand here now, with the rep, the reputation that has got, I know he did absolutely nothing at Everton, and Bournemouth, and Chelsea, and Chelsea, and, and every and club he's been at, really. No, no. <laughs> there was somewhere else. Was he somewhere else in England as well? I can't remember. I think it's only those two. Garner, he's been obviously his he reputation comes from somewhere. Exactly, and Chelsea did buy him. And he is a foreign man, so he didn't. They didn't just buy him for the British quarter, right? So yes. there is a reason behind their purchase. So you know, give the lad a chance, especially with Aaron's out now. I think we'd do because Gufranch is not dynamic enough, is he, for, to be a winger? He lacks dynamism. Yes. yes, you are right. So hopefully, and pace. That's another thing against Huddersfield. It was so obvious we needed bare pace and jet in that team. Is and that- now with Lazar and Atsu and Richie, we've got bare pace. Is that an? an element you think we now have in abundance bare pace or do we still not in abundance we've got just a nice amount haven't we we've just got the right the right amount of speed in the right areas of the pitch when everyone's fit mm. so overall how would you rate our our business as a, as a as a window looking at it as one collective thing the ins and outs money spent money brought in how do you how do you rate that overall bloody good really good you bloody good it? how can you not be 12 players in 30. we're still 30 million in the the red or the black? In the black. In the black. In the black. Ah, yes. I always get those mixed up because I'm colour blind. Not really, but I've just made that up. I can't see the likes of Kieran Clark and Kieran Clark being much use if we go up. So that's just a bit of a, a short sighted buy. Is Kieran Clark the only black spot on your. And Kieran Clark. And maybe. Ah, and Kieran Clark. Kieran Clark. Kieran Clark. Kieran Clark. Kieran Clark Bad well. footballer. But other than that, I think everyone could play a role in the Premier League potentially next year if we do go up. Would you be, and I have this isn't a question I plan to ask, but we've added a lot of new faces since the last game in particular. Lazar's come in, Atsu's come in, Murphy's come in. Would you go straight in and add them all into the side, or would you start maybe adding them gently one at a time and seeing how they fit? Well, we've got an international break, haven't we now? Mm. So hopefully, your boy Mitro will be fit by the end of that. Yes, and he I'd needs you, to play, I think. He was touching, he was touching goal. For the game he missed. Yeah, concussion didn't. So he, he should be all right. Touchy though. subject. It is, yes. So hopefully he can get a run of games now. I don't see why you wouldn't throw Lazar in, because Paul Dummett's currently the incumbent at left back. You know, not a Paul Dummett fan, are we, Ross? Well, I, 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 I didn't mind him personally. I didn't think he disgraced himself in the Premier League, but since we've gone down, it's just shown he's not a Championship player either. Dear <laughs> me. Like, I thought he'd be more like he's he makes one big. Heroic tackle of the game and all the beast stand. I see that. I watch them all. Get in there, Paul. And then the rest of the game, he gets skinned by the whoever he's playing against. No matter who it's against. Do apparently rejected a bid from on deadline day from Mister for Mister <laughs> Mister. <laughs> Mister, I am upset at Newcastle's transfer policy. Mister Alan Pardew. Mister Mister Paul Dummett is not good enough to play for my club. Alan Pardew. I'll oh, buy by the way, four and a half million. Pounds. I'll have Paul Dummett off you, please. 
I can't how, believe how that. How much do they think he's worth if they're rejecting four, four and a half million? <laughs> I think they were just doing it to toy with Pardew. <laughs> they probably kept saying, oh yeah, he's available, he's available. And then on transfer deadline day, no, I can't remember. Psych. He's a clown, isn't he? I'm upset with Newcastle's transfer policy. Let's sign every player I ever signed for Newcastle United now. Well, not I ever signed. I oversaw the signing of because just, it was just Mr. Good Graham ones. Carr, wasn't it? Just the good ones. Proving that the transfer policy wasn't really to blame for his failure. Yeah, it was him. Um, I almost hesitate to ask this because I don't think we're going to agree. But oh, I'm spilling my coffee everywhere. I think we're going to disagree. But right now, on paper, not in terms of form or blend or anything like that, what is your strongest 11? Out of the whole squad? Out of the whole squad. The squad we've now assembled, how do you... Get your hour off the table and you won't do that, you this silly man. Right then, Rob Elliott starts in goal for me when he's fit again. Um, yes, Rob Elliott for me as well. Right back will be Mr Vernon and Eater until I'm proven otherwise. Because I've seen very little of Yedlin. And from what I have seen of him, he's a man that gets away with a lot because he's hellfire rabid. I like, just... your, my, like your man Theo Walcott, he's got absolutely no ability on the ball. But he gets away because he's hellfire rabid. I would just drop Yedlin straight in. I am a big admirer of DeAndre Yedlin, despite his previous transgressions. Um, I would just—I mean, I know Vern's Vern's done nothing wrong. I'm not going to criticise Vern and Nia, um, but I just think this is in this league you can get away with having somebody like that, someone who is just hellfire rapid with a, a lack of ability. And I don't know. Just I, I suppose I've got to see De- oh, Will, DeAndre's yes. whip. I've got to see a few of his whips. And his name, eh? um, centre backs pick themselves, don't pick they? Pick really? themselves now, I think. The cells. Even though he will, Rafa will change them every single game because he's that sort of man. And Bemba likes the rotation. The cells and the Bemba. It's in Bemba and one other, isn't it? Mm. Really, and ideally the cells. Um, your left back. This is the big one. See, if you're going to drop Mister DeAndre Yedlin, in, I'm going to drop Mister Lazar in. Okay. Because Why? pace, attacking. <laughs> And he can't be any worse than Dummick going the way. He might not hit that big rake and tackle that gets the whole East stand off their feet. But uh, he's got to be better going forward. Because when Dummett get past, gets past that halfway line, I know he's got a decent cross on him. But that doesn't come out very often, doesn't it? Ross, you're going to punch me square in the mouth for this, right? But not only would I still be starting Paul Dummett... You'd make him captain, would you? For God, no. But I would do so specifically to give us the option to bring Lazar on if we're not winning... <laughs> To make that patented Pardew 60th minute left back for left back substitution. <laughs> each, each to their own, isn't it? I think each, each to their own. I think Dummett adds. I think if. Because obviously in, in my starting 11, I've got Yedlin on one side. I don't want to have two absolutely kamikaze fullbacks. Why not with Newcastle? That's what we're like. Yeah, we're uh, like, like the cat in football and keep down the grass. I know, but what can I say? <laughs> I would still start Dummett because I think Lazar gives you something else. I think you can always. Add more to the fullback position. It's very difficult to make it more. You, it's, it's a waste of a substitution to try and make your fullback more solid. But I think it's always a good substitution to try and give you an extra option going forward. Personally, I'm sure I get pelters for literally being Pardew, but never mind. Um, assuming we're going with the patented Rafa Benitez four two two three one. Who are you two? J Joe. J Joe. Right. Yeah. I'd agree. Yeah. And Hayden. Sh- I mean, the, yeah, the, I can't disagree. You can see game by game they're just getting more cohesive as a unit, aren't they? Yes, they complement each other very well, I think, as well. Um, Hayden keeps it simple, John Joe. Well, no, I think the, the, the mix it up a bit. Buoyant man that he is. The mix it up a bit because Shelby does occasionally like a dart and run forward, in which case Hayden's very comfortable in being the one to break up anything that comes as a result of it. But at the same time, Shelby does like taking a step back and just pinging balls around. And when he does it, you can see Hayden's confident enough. To then make up the gap in front of them, it's a lot he's of got finger, it. finger movements you're doing there. See, if they'd vote for me in that football manager thing, it would have been all this. So what is that? I, I still watch Raf on the touchline. And he's going there like this. He just talks them through it. Like, ha, do you reckon he has meetings where he says, "This is what that means. This is what that means." I think they, just, they must know from training. Obviously, that's that's obvious. I mean, that's what is that obvious? Mean? He's got four fingers up and does that football. That means do a football. That means. Um, yeah. His new assistant, though, the one that replaced the one that left in the summer. His name's neither of which names I can recall. Uh, he's a big man with brown, longish hair. Okay. Goes absolutely radio rental at set pieces when we're defending. It's absolutely fantastic to see. 
<laughs> about like what? we look like everyone's got a man. Yeah. Everyone, will, we're on the eighteen-yard line. We're looking solid, but he's going. I get pot in the touchline. I always find this very impressive because I used to have a seat very low down in St James's Park, right? And I couldn't see anything. You'd watch set pieces happen, you'd watch goals, and I'd be like, "Well, I know who scored it, but I can't really see what happened." Managers on the touchline have that same angle view. It's literally just a flat wall of players. You can't see it, and yet they're organised on. They can see exactly who's got who. Set pieces from across well, the pitch. I thought because check out this big dog here. I spent last season in the press box at St James's Park, right? And I was expecting to hear everything from the touchline, everything the manager said. The only man you could hear, other than Jurgen Klopp, you could hear him loud and clear, was Big Sam Allardyce. I am stunned. Couldn't hear McLaren. Wait, McLaren was Simpson. He used to stand at the front, didn't he? McLaren used to sit down and keep his hair dry. Because, you know, if it got wet, if it'd it got wet, it would a look, lot it would, more obvious. It would look terrible if it got wet. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, and funny enough, Allardyce's thing kept shouting in that derby was having a go at Yedlin. For checking back. So watch that. If Yedlin keeps checking back, it's a problem. Checking apparently. back in what sense? Coming back the way or Running inside? forward, checking in, passing back. Or just checking back and then passing back. Oh, interesting. So he might be a bit of a... That would frustrate the tits off me, Ross. It frustrated the tits off Sam as well. And quite, that's quite the achievement. Um, Fine set of sighty bow jangles. So we agreed with Shelby and Hayden in the middle. Shelby and Hayden, yeah. Uh, right, because this is this this is where it all gets interesting. The I three think the, at the minute the wingers pick themselves. Surely the two wide lads. Tell me who you think they are, and I'll tell you uh, if you're right or wrong. Well, because I've got Dummett in in my team. You don't I would, need Gufran. I wouldn't worry about having Atsu straight in because I think there's a bit of solidity behind him. You wouldn't have to worry too much. If I if I was sticking Lazar in there, I would stay with Gufran. I don't like I don't like having two people on the same side who are both wanting to make runs straight forward. Lazar's going to make runs straight forward. Atu's going to make runs straight forward. Like either having someone who's either solid or someone who's going to cut in and gets. I'm, I'm doing this when, too much. When, when Dummett, you're doing that. When Dummett, this is Dummett. I'm presuming. Yeah. When Dummett does that, he just does that. He just stops. I know. Yeah. So he doesn't need. Well, I know, but it means when your man goes forward, you got to double no up in the wings. You got to double up and overlaps and kamikaze football. I'm wanting here. Right, well, who have you got then on the left? Atsu. Atsu, so have I. But that left might be looking a bit piss weak wet. <laughs> piss wet weak. <laughs> piss weak wet. Piss weak. But it's attacking and... How are we? Newcastle in the we championship after quite right. Matt Ritchie on the... I mean, we're not going to disagree yeah, with Matt Ritchie on the right hand side. Um, this is the big one though, isn't it? This is the one. The number 10 roll. Or because nobody's claimed it so far, which is frustrating. When we've, I know we've only played four games. Is it four games? Four games and a cup game. Five? No, no, we lost two, won three, and a cup game as well. And a cup game. So Bloody hell, these games. Championship's like amazing, isn't rapid it? Rapid fire in it. So I was six games into the season, and nobody's claimed that position as their own, which is a bit surprising. Realistically, what 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 are your options? Perez, Perez or Diarmi? I think it's a straight fight between the pair of them, isn't it? Mm. And who wins for you? Perez looks lost when he's been there so far this season. He does, which I think is a shame because I always thought the way he played, he was wasted out wide. He wasn't enough of a unit to play up front on his own. But he's smacked of someone that could do really well as a number 10. But not like a number 10, number 10, like an Aguero number 10 who's going to get beyond the forward. He's going to mm. start deep, get it, can play around, but will also make runs. Like when he has played there, it looks like Raf has given him a. just said, get out there, Bonnie lads, take a few players on, score as a goal. I wonder what that is in Spanish. We always do this. We never work it out. Bonnie lad. So I, it looks like you said that one, but then Perez is just marked by two seven foot, five hundred pound centre halves and kicked. I think the problem with it is Perez is a very clever footballer. He's very technically gifted. He's very good, but championship defenders have seen his like before mm. they've seen a tricky lightweight good finisher they've seen them a hundred times and they know exactly how to deal with them and Perez as yet I think I actually think he'll do it eventually but as yet has not figured out how to play that he should I mean should he go wide to start getting the ball because centre halves aren't going to want to follow him out there should he come even deeper but it's not where he's comfortable playing should he always be looking to make the runs and use his pace he's got stuff in his locker which means he could play well there but no, for me at the minute, strong starting eleven, Modiami. Who equally you see, you could Diarmi, he, nailed he, that down. He clearly wasn't fit against Huddersfield when he made his debut. No, I think that's and apparent. then since then, I know he set up the goal for Gale at Bristol City. Lovely ball. But other than that, 
done now. Has he's he? growing into it. I think. I think. Hopefully, you, I've, hopefully I've seen. I've true. seen an improvement in it. Not a, not a massive one, but I've seen an improvement with every game. And I suppose that's all you can ask for, really. Because mm. why? Why wasn't he fit? He's not trained all summer or something. He's been injured. Well, he must have because Hull only had like twelve players, didn't they, before Weird. deadline day? <laughs> no, I, th- I think there's definitely. Again, I mean, I always, I always hesitate to go on strongest 11s because you should pick the team that's going to win you that game in particular based yeah. on the opposition. But I think there's op- there's games where I would certainly play Perez for his because Diarmi's not going to make those runs in behind. He's going to get the ball and he's going to do things play with, with it. He's back to play it. He's back to goal. Um, and also, who I would play there is very much dependent on who I would play. Well, for. you don't play Galen Perez. I think, I think we're both we're both unanimous here that it's got to be Daryl Murphy starting every game, hasn't it? Ah, no. Uh, Gail or Mitrovic? Personally, the way we've started the season, I'd go Mitrovic. Just wow. because of the style of play doesn't suit Dwight Gale. I know he scored a goal every game, but... <laughs> I know he scored a goal every single game. But, but I think Mitrovic would have scored two every single game that we've been playing. That's... Ooh, that's bold, yes. Like, what... The the ball... I know they've... Oh, it's getting a drink. I know they've stopped in recent weeks, but the balls down the channels to Gale didn't work. Didn't work. He was there, he had a tap in, a big free kick. I know that obviously when we're playing away from yeah, home against I mean, the better teams, Gale on the counter attack makes a lot more sense than Mitrovic. It's it's gonna sound odd to say, but despite the fact he scored every game, I don't think any of the goals he scored has come from the way we're trying to give him no. chances. Penalty he, He's got one tap in, hasn't he? Tap in, penalty free kick uh, that really nice through ball from Diame, which is the first time I've seen him run through the middle that's what we need to be doing with him but we don't do it enough which it's is kind of bizarre that really isn't yeah. it we're clearly trying to we're, play, we're trying to play a very specific way to get him into the channels to do things and we've not really had any good chances come from nope. that but yet he's still I mean testament to his ability that he's still finding goals oh, all yeah. over the pitch um, but I think either it's got to be Mit- well. We'll have to change. The whole- we're not going to play those balls in for Mitrovic, though. We? We're not going to get him in the channel. Why don't you put Perez in behind? Like in the Premier League, those two. Were- oh, it's amazing having options, isn't well, it? Had- it's, it's amazing. Our minds have been blown by the first time in about fifteen years having a squad rather than just a. First we could honestly. Eleven. We. I mean, we've agreed on a lot of this because we're both very clever men. Obviously. and Know a lot about football, but we could we could contest every single position mm-hmm. on this pitch. Well, I've literally got two players every position now. We have. Yeah. Literally. We've got th- four goalkeepers now. Three. Four. Three. No, Cruz Wood- gone. Woodman's still here. Woodman, Darlow. Se- Sells Elliot. Dear me. Too many. God, hey. Can we play for choice. Can we play more than one goalkeeper? Are you allowed to do that? No. What a silly Why? question that Why? is. Play him outfield, you mean? Yeah. A lot of goalkeepers save with their feet, don't they? See, why not? When we're, home, we're home to Burton. If you're watching, Rafa. Um... I think we've kind of just touched on it there, but how does this compare coming out of a transfer window? How does it compare to the sort of previous five or six? I mean, I can't remember ever feeling fully satisfied. Every single one you're thinking, we need that player, well, that position, that position, and that, we didn't position get them. that position, we didn't get them. And we're trying, we even tried yeah. to get them. Well, sometimes we did try. Over the line. With just a, a, an offer that was never going to accept it, just yeah. to show, you know, we are trying, we're, we're trying, lads, we do want to progress the club, we have got ambition. Yeah, I mean, it's, but, uh, it's a pretty obvious answer. I, this is the most satisfying I think I've been with the Newcastle United I mean we've come out the window and we'll have we might have the strongest 11 because other teams have got good players but we've got by far and away the strongest squad God, by which miles, should yeah. over the next 41 games should pay dividends you'd hope so aye I mean I remember the last two major summer transfer windows the McLaren one I was I was happy with because I thought we bought some good players didn't get enough but I know that you were still looking and thinking well we haven't strengthened there and we haven't strengthened there and we're still missing here and here there were still gaps in it. The last Pardew one, the infamous summer 2014 14. transfer window, I thought, again, we'd made some great signings, but you looked at the squad and you thought, well, we're still really weak here and we're still really weak here. I thought CM Dion was the one, you know, when we signed that. Really could, when they announced it at midnight or whatever I was did, absolutely buzzing. And I got woken up by a little Sky Sports notification, Newcastle, <laughs> have signed Ajax centre-forward CM Dion yeah, for £7 I was, million. And I was absolutely I moment. thought, poof, £7 million for him after what we've seen... Against Man City, the Champions League, and then steal. that was clearly why we got him because he's seven million. A crock, poor lad. Bye, team. But at least it he's back nice. with his brother. I'd love to have kept him this year. You know, you imagine what he could have done in the championship if he'd stayed fit. Well, you wouldn't know, would he? <laughs> I know, I know. Um, him and Luke now tearing up for PSV, aren't they? The no, will watch him give a forty goals between them. It's because the Dutch league is horrible. Awful. Um, 
on paper, not from what we've seen so far, but on paper, who's the best buy in terms of fee and ability? I think Richie. You, was he the most expensive or second most expensive? 12 mils. 12 million for Matt Richie's the best investment we've made. He's the best player we've got now, I think, isn't he? Yes. I think I've asked you this on a previous one. I think he's the best technical footballer we've got, mm. technically, but I also think he's the most... Why possibly the most effective player we've got as well? He's the most exciting. I most think. exciting player. He's just great, isn't he? I generally haven't had that buzz when a player gets on the ball. For I couldn't even tell you. He works say. hard. He grafts. He he cares. He knows what that means. Fresh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he's got. That. I mean, he's not. He's not happening, Ben Arthur. And I don't, I don't want to make. We know, obviously not. But you get that excitement at this level. But you imagine do. having Ben Arthur with the tenacity of Matthew James. Oh Cuthbert my Ritchie. God! You're cheating over the world Christ. with a work race. It's terrifying, that. God, hey. But I think because you look at Sissoko for thirty million, and you look at Rich. <laughs> You look at Richie. You look at Richie. For, <laughs> That's not going to stop being you look, funny, is it? You look at Richie for twelve. I know Sissoko had a unreal last two games at the Euros. Right, but, but that's in just four two, years. That was two it, games, really. isn't it? So the the price difference there. I'm really. Looking, I'm looking forward to Sissoko having one absolutely outstanding game, probably in the Champions League against who they got Sparta Prague. I've not even seen the draw. They've not got a, They've not got any marquee teams in their group. No. Spurs. I don't think. Unless I've misread it, but you'll have one absolutely outstanding game where you'll beat about four players. You'll put in one cross for a goal, and we'll be besieged with tweets going, "Oh, you say he was just couldn't play at your." That's, we need a Cockney accent, not a Geordie one. But he can't play at your f***ing grand, can he? You f***ing couldn't get the best out of him. <laughs> so Paul Mer- was it Paul Merson? Was it Niall Quinn saying this on N- deadline? Niall day? Quinn, yeah. But when he's going to Everton, when he's going to Everton, clearly. Uh, a season ticket holder from James's Park who understands the frustrations that come with Musa Sissoko, the lack of effort that comes with Musa Sissoko, that oh the telly's what, on, what, let's let's try this week. What was Musa it? Sissoko. When you're down there and you're in a you're, in a, you're playing in a poor team, it's hard to be the star man every week. I think that was the the gist. Surely of what he it should said. be easier because your team's crap. Or be, be the star <laughs> man any week, Aye. not every week, just right. once, except for when you're on telly. Um, you Matt Richie's on paper the best buy. I think personally. from what we've seen so far, the limited appearances they've had, who's been the best buy? Still Matt Ritchie. I'd possibly put Hayden. Toss up between him and Hayden, isn't it? I think. Oh, how much was Hayden? He was next to nine hundred k. Nine hundred k. He looks an absolute bargain. Twenty one. Young man. Oh, I don't know where we've plucked. I mean, I know we've got him from Arsenal, but you know, twenty one at Arsenal. He's been in their been. reserves for a long old while, hasn't he? So. You'd think the players they brought through last year at Arsenal, you would have at least heard of him, or you would have had a mm. sniff, because it was that position they were really struggling with. Cochlin, Cochlin or Hayden? Cochlin, no brainer. Isn't it? It's Hayden all day long. Hayden isn't it? all day long for me. Um, final question I want to ask you, and this is quite a deep one. You may need to muse on it for a moment. We'll just cut, we can cut out the thought process. But right. In terms of characteristics, what does this squad have now that it didn't have at the start of the window? Or what does it have now that the team that go the team that went down didn't? Bals. Right. Big, hairy, sweaty bals. That team we had last year was in its shell. It was scared to express itself or it couldn't express itself because it wasn't confident enough to do so. Uh-huh. I think the likes of Richie, Gail, Lazar's got a fancy haircut, so he's a confident bastard. He's a isn't handsome he? man, isn't he? Is he so uh Lascelles has come with the top knot. Uh, Sh- Shall we just judge clean. how good they are after the hairstyles? Anyway, the point I'm getting at: <laughs> the flamboyant men called Kiliotna. They're not one all over. You and Gufran. Because a few one all overs in that squad. Maybe Richard got a one. Shelby's got a zero. <laughs> <laughs> not by choice, I don't think. Uh, Hayden's got. I don't know. But like, car- but, you know what I mean? Yes. I think that pl- that team last year was well. It was coached to be uninspiring. Safe. Safe's the word solid. I would go with, yeah. I think this one Ironically. This one's being allowed to express itself. So basically it's Dan Rafa. Yeah. But also I think he's got the right characters to do that because Richie likes a Maradona, likes a little flick here and there. Diarmo is shown, he likes a flick as well. Shelby likes a Hollywood ball. They look mentally stronger. I mean, no, even the Huddersfield game when we got beat, they didn't look, there wasn't like a downing of tools. There was still, I mean, we looked hopeless trying to go forward, mm. but there was still... Every, nobody was hiding. Everybody was still attempting stuff. Well, at the um, end of the game, I was. St- it still remains one of the most painful moments I've witnessed since James's Park. The end of that game, where 
Big Jamal did a lap of the pitch and every single person on the way out of the stadium just turned their back oh. and didn't. He was just there clapping. He did it in the cup game as well. Got a, just didn't got get a, got a polite return. cheer. That's, that's kind of known. But still, He's I, young and learn. Colicini wouldn't have done that. That's what I think. Straight we've we've got rid... That problem's gone. That jobs for the boys mentality. Mm. That you're safe no matter what you do every single week is gone. Well and true. I think that's the most important thing. I mean, certainly LaSalle getting given the armband and getting dropped two weeks later. Like, you are not going to play in this squad under Benitez unless you are playing you're well. You're playing well. Although people are accusing him of having favourites already. Vern, in particular. Can you blame him? No, absolutely not. He's our favourite. We need, we need every one of these. We need to set up your little Vern picture on the table. Right. Well, we'll do that from now on. But anyway... <laughs> Well, Vern, though, he played in right midfield because, well, I don't know why. <laughs> it was one of the most baffling calls I've seen at Newcastle for a while. But at right back, he's a good player. Anywhere he's a good player. I mean, I don't think he, t- he certainly isn't. We're not right midfield, he's not a good player. He wasn't the answer at right midfield, but he, could be, he plays there. He's played Harry, I thought. No, he was awful. Didn't set the world he on He was awful, him. apart from those two Hollywood balls. Those two balls this season at Fulham. When he got the sprinklers on. Vern anyway, a favourite, really? Well, I think that's he's, the he's, his performances are keeping him in the team for me. I do, I agree. Um, I think I agree with you, Ross. I think we've just got character now. We've got confidence. We've, we've got, got belief. We've got bowels, and they're not afraid to show them. Mental strength, which I think we've been lacking for a long time. Resiliency. Resiliency. That's the word. Um, yeah, that's the difference. That was what will see us win this league at a canter. Howie, etc. Right. Thank you very much for joining us on the ninth fans forum. Maybe the famous number nine fans forum. Uh, I have been Adam as ever. I've been joined by Ross. The pleasure has been yours. Yes, it has. Uh, we'll be back on the tenth of September for a live stream of the Derby away match. Uh, join us then if you can. I'll probably be joined by Ross and probably by Simon, but we'll see how that and goes. And cans and cans, many a can. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe from Adam and Ross. Goodbye, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>